Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bible Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. We are excited to have each and every one of you join in with us today. Pastor Scott does have an amazing message entitled, Guard Your Heart. Um, please, we ask that you keep all your devices on mute to avoid any background noise. Um, let's ask a question by Pastor Scott. Um, once you answer the question, you can remute yourself again. Lastly, Bible is a fully accredited, terrible organization under the United Coast. State, state code 501c3. If you desire to leave a monetary donation um, in order to help those less fortunate, please do so by going to our website at www.intlword.net. Um, <clears throat> this will allow you to make your monetary donation. Without further ado, I will now hand this portion over um, for our opening prayer. All right, if everybody could bow their heads in prayer, please. Dear Father God, Lord, we just thank you for waking each and every one of us up today, Lord. We are just so thankful for your grace and your mercy towards us, Lord. We just ask that you open up our hearts, Lord, and that we're able just to receive the full message that Pastor Scott has for us today, Lord. Um, I just ask that you protect each and every one of us from all harm and all evil, Lord, and that today just be a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, good afternoon. All right, I have some praise reports. Uh, we have Minister Emmanuel. He is thanking God for helping him pass his wildland firefighter state exam. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Elder Angel Beard, I love it. All right, um, and then we have uh, myself. I'm just thankful uh, really for just much, much needed time this weekend. I got some organizing done as well as we were able to, well, I was able to spend time with my husband, uh, family, as well as some friends. So just thankful and grateful for that extra time to get things done. And that is all I have for this week. So I will pass it over to Elder Angel Barron. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hello and welcome to another enlightening discussion at Bible, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, we will delve into a great message entitled, Guard Your Heart. Pastor Scott will lead us through a powerful exploration of the significance of safeguarding our thoughts, drawing on practical examples and powerful Bible scriptures. In this crucial teaching, we'll uncover the dangers of departing from the true path and falling prey to the spirit of apostasy which blinds many with the lies and false teachings. Learn how to recognize and resist the spirit of the Antichrist and discover the ultimate destiny of those who stray away from the truth. This message is highly essential for anyone seeking spiritual growth and discernment in these last and evil days. Through God's word, we will gain a deeper understanding of how to protect our hearts and minds. Together, we will strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ and prepare for his imminent return. And now, let's receive God's word through our great pastor and teacher, Pastor T. Archit Scott. Amen, amen, amen. I don't think it gets any better than that. If you can get an introduction like that, you somebody. <laughs> so look, we're so happy to have each and every one of you with me today. And... Um, we are a body, and it is very imperative that we realize nobody is any greater than the weakest person. So just so you'll know, when I'm teaching, I'm trying my best to be able to make sure that I'm teaching at such a level that uh, even those who may not have a long-standing relationship with God will be able to understand because it's important. The Bible says it like this. In all our getting, in other words, in anything you do with God, make sure you get a good understanding. And that's important. So I want to thank God, first of all, Minister Emmanuel. Thank God for him doing the actual sound checks. Thank God for Sister Shea with that wonderful welcome. And uh, she's the master of welcoming. And so thank God for Sister Tanya, the testimonies. She will, she, we, we will have testimony. And you know what? Let me say this. Some of you all know God is moving in your life and you need to be able to put a testimony in. Call her up on Monday if you have to, just so she can get it in for this Sundays. Because again, I know God is moving and that encourages others. And that's what we want, to encourage one another. 
Then I want to thank God also uh, for all of you all who have come in today. Uh, good, always good to see Brother Carlos and Sister Laura Lai and Brother Quinn. So good to see you all, Sister Shyla and Brother Ian and all the others. I can't see everybody, but just some ones that I can actually see. We thank God for each and every one of you all. And as you all can already tell, I've got special guests over in this big, luxurious place that I'm in. My God. Um, hey, you guys in the background? Yeah. They, they, they wait, wait, wait. Hey, y'all, are y'all there? Uh, are y'all, oh, 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 oh my God. Wait a second. Jesus, Jesus, all up in this space, in this space. So, hey, we thank God. Y'all know the, the Bears are a long time, over 30 year friends of ours, and also my children's godparents. So, we thank God for them coming in town. And uh, we just, like I said, we're going to have a wonderful time together. But let's get into the word of God. So today's lesson is entitled, Guard Your, I mean, Guard Thy Heart, which is your heart. Guard your heart. When we talk about the heart, we want to talk, we're talking about three different parts of an individual. And I'm going to be doing some teaching a little bit more deeper on certain things, but I'm going to try to make it very easily understood. The heart is always the centered part of that person the center part of that person's being. If I were to say physically, speaking physically, and I say uh, our heart, what part do you think I'm talking about, Sister Shade, when I'm, I'm talking physically? Your heart, like in your chest? Yes. Or, yeah. Absolutely. That's, that better be there. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's physically. Uh, then we have the heart of our soul, and our soul, or our solical part, is our mind. And so when we talk about guarding our heart, the center part of that part, is our mind, is our thinking. That's our soul. It's comprised of several different things. And then we have the other heart, which is the center of us spiritually, which is our spirit, because we are made of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. And that spirit makes us aware of the things of God and the things of the devil. Let me just share this with you since I mentioned that. When we talk about the actual soul, that is very important because this is the part. Now, this is in Proverbs, the fourth chapter. If you could turn there, uh, but I'll read it to you. Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verse number 23. And I'm going to read it as follows. Proverbs 4 and 23 says this. King James Version, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What we think is what we'll become, and generally what we are. It is very important that we understand when we're talking about psychologically, we're talking about the heart because this is what David was talking about uh, when he was, when they, I mean Solomon, when he was telling people to guard thy heart, he's telling them, guard what you think because I want you to know that the, the fight, the struggle that we have going on in all of us is with our body and our body does not want to do what the spirit wants it to do. So they battle for the soul. They battle for your mind. Now, let me just tell you a little bit more what that actual soul or that mind is comprised of. I already mentioned the thinking. Let me go through this little list I have here. The actual soul is that part of us that deals with our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our imagination, our intellect, our will, our desires, our attitudes, our stress points, our anxieties, and last of all, our conscience. If any of those areas in us become damaged, it's going to affect all of us. It's going to affect every part of us. Because whatever you think on, that's what's going to tell your body what to do. That's why it's so important. Now, when we talk about guarding your heart or guarding your thoughts, that's what we're going to use today, guarding your thoughts. When we talk about guarding our thoughts, 
Where did you hear that word guard? Um, Brother Minister Dion, what does it make you think of guard? When it says guard your, your heart, what does it make you think of? Uh, well, sir, when I hear the word, word or term guard, I'd say it just makes me think of uh, like being aware, being on watch, um, being sensitive to that area in case there is anything off there. Yeah, very good. And then, uh, Minister Emanuel, what do we guard ourselves in natural life? What would we guard ourselves from? Why would we need to guard something in our natural life? Certainly in our natural life, we would prefer to guard things that are of a uh, high value uh, to us um, and just safeguard those things to protect it from possibly being taken or stolen or yeah. compromised in any kind of way. Boy, you said a mouthful right there. You guard whatever is special to you. If you say that you have something that is special to you and you don't guard it, you don't. Well, let's get some other uh, synonyms for that. Other words for guarding. Uh, Elder Angelbert, what's other words for guarding or to guard? To protect, to be watchful. Okay. Uh, that's A. To protect, to be watchful. Uh, Sister Tanya, do you have anything that is a physical that is special to you and that you're guarding? What would that be? Yeah, there's there's a lot of things. My husband, my dog, my kids. <laughs> well, yes, yes. How about how about how about like jewelry, things like that? Oh, oh, geez. Um. Well, let's just say you have yeah. some financial things. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. For instance, like you said, financial money. You put your money in a bank to guard it. What are you guarding that money from by putting it in the bank? Um, if anyone was to break into the house, they couldn't just take it. Now you're talking now. You're guarding it so nobody can get in and break in and take it. And don't you know that's what the devil does? The Bible says in the book of John, the 10th chapter, verse number 10, referring to the devil, the thief cometh but not to but to steal kill, and destroy. Jesus says in the next verse, verse 11, but I have come to bring you life and that much more abundantly. Anything that tries to kill anything dealing with God is of the devil. I don't care if it's a person, a place, or a thing. If you all remember one time Jesus was talking to Peter and he tells Peter, it is written, I have to go down into Jerusalem to be crucified. And Peter, not knowing the scripture, rebukes Jesus and says, let that be far from you. Don't even think, I don't know where you got that from. That's crazy. You're not going to die. And, and Jesus realizes that's not Peter talking. That's the devil. And so he says, Satan, get behind me. And Peter is trying to prove that he knows God. He knows himself better than Jesus. Let me tell you like this. Many times there are things that are in our life right now. And the reason they're in our life is because God's trying to show you and God's trying to show me that we don't know our own self and we need him to deliver us. Just because you haven't been delivered of something and you say you've been praying for it doesn't mean that God hadn't heard you. It simply means if he hasn't moved, he's trying to show us it's not time for it to get moved if you prayed about it. If you prayed about it and if you pray about anything and it doesn't move, God is saying it's not time for it to move. It is not that he didn't hear your prayers. God hears our prayers even before we speak it out of our mouth. Many times we speak things out of our mouth and God is saying, listen, I know the intent of your heart. You can say the right thing and have the wrong thoughts about it. And if you have the wrong thoughts about it, God's not moving anyway. I know what I'm talking about. I want to share a short story with you all. And it's vitally uh, important that you listen to this. Here is a king. He's a king in this place of India. He has this guard that protects him, that keeps him, that leads and guides him because he's very familiar with the enemies 
and he's familiar with the terrain around that area where they live. And so what he does, every time the king goes anywhere, he goes with the king, and he's also known as a wise guard also, so he's a soldier. So the king has been hearing all these great things about this young man. And he actually became jealous of him. So the young man, who's this king of these, or he's, he's over the guards, I should say, he's out one day chopping some wood. And the king who has never chopped wood, he said, let me get this ax. I want to chop some wood myself. And he's like, well, king, you have to you have to know now. You have to be very careful. He says, I'm the king. I know what I'm doing. And he said, all right, that's fine, king. But I'll just say this to you. Please be safe. You don't have to tell me to be safe. I know what's good. So he goes and he tried to chop the wood. And the actual axe hit off the wood and went down and chopped his baby toe. And the top of his baby toe was cut off. And he's flustered and he's mad. And then because he didn't want to look bad in front of this other person, he definitely because I'm the king. And then the guard who was wise, he tells him, he said, king, just we'll get it wrapped up. But here's what I want you to know. He says to the king, it's going to work for you good. And the king is he is at this wit's end. He doesn't want to hear it's going to work for my good because the king has had his toe cut off, the top of his toe, and he's upset. And the man says to him, the guard says to him, I'm telling you, king, it's going to work for your good. And he is so upset. Let me just say this. When you are very upset, that is not the time to make a very strategic decision. It is not the time to make a a very important decision because if you don't put thought into your decisions, then what things you say could be said out of anger or out of spite. And unfortunately, a lot of things we say, it's too late to bring it back. You can apologize for it, but it's already gone out. So the king is so upset. He says, you know what? I'm going to show you about working for your good. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to go and put you in jail. How about that? For disrespecting me. And that's what he did. He said, I'm going to put you in jail. So as they're coming to take the, 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 the head of the guards and put them in jail, he says to the king, it's still going to work for my good also. And the king is just fierce. He doesn't want to hear that. And, of course, that's scripture also. So what happens is, the king is going out. He gets on his horse. He says, I don't need any of these guards. I don't need anybody riding with me. I'm going out into this forest. I just need space by myself. I just need time by myself. And so he goes riding into this forest. And while he was going to the forest, he kind of got off guard. He kind of got off path because it's usually the guard who's leading him. And he finds himself lost in the forest. And when he gets lost in this forest, what winds up happening is this other enemies of the king surrounded him. They were hiding in the forest. And when they surrounded him, they captured him. They went and tied him up. They put him on their horse and they took him to their kingdom. And when they got him to the kingdom, they brought him to their king and they said, King, what should we do with this king who's over this area of India? And the king said, I know what we'll do. We'll offer him up as sacrifice. And surely our gods will be glad that we offer them up for sacrifice. So what they did is they went and got that king and they stripped him down. They took off his clothes. They would put sticks all around him. They're getting ready to light this flame. And then one of them that were actually the person who was over the sacrifice looks and sees he has got the top of his toe cut off. And according to their, their actual ritual, who whatever and whoever they offer up cannot have any blemish of that sort or anything missing from their body. So they said, oh, you're no good for us. We can't even offer you up. So go ahead, get your horse, get back to your own people, but stay out of our forest. And the king does exactly that. He limps over. He gets on his horse. He rides with all he can. He goes back to his own palace and everything. And he's sitting there on his throne. And he just starts thinking, oh, I'm just so fortunate, so fortunate. 
And then he heard the voice of his guard. And the guard said, it'll be working for your good. And he said he was so upset because he had no idea that by cutting off that tip of his toe, which looked like it was an accident, something that was bad, it actually saved his life. And he remembered what that guard told him. And he immediately said, hey, go bring that guard back to me. I've got to tell him something. I've got to let him know that this was something good. It really wasn't that bad. And because he went and brought that guard back out of there, he said, I wanted you to know what you did for me. You really saved my life. I really didn't realize that this bad thing that was in my life actually worked for my good. And I want you to know, I want to thank you. He said, but I do have a question for you, but I want you to know I'm restoring everything that you had and going to give you even that much more. But how did you know it will work good for me, but it wasn't working good for you? He said, King, you don't understand. It did work good for me because if I were there with you at that time, which I'm always there with you, and I had gone in the forest with you, when they had captured you and they found out you had blemish, they would have gone for me and I'd be dead right now and going to prison, going into your chambers, having you send me there, save my life. Saints of God. There are things that are in your life right now, and even though it does not look like it's good, even though it looks like you're having friction, you look like things are not working out to your advantage, and seemingly you wish that you had, just that you want to deal with things your way, I want you to know that doesn't mean just because it's not working out that God's not with you. Like the actual guard said, this thing is working out for your good. Here's what I want you to know today. Guard your heart. Guard what things you're thinking. Don't let the enemy tell you that things are not going to work out. That's what the devil always wants to tell people to know. And the Bible says, according to Romans, the eighth chapter, verse number 28. And we know that all things are working for the good to them that love the Lord. To them that are the called according to his purpose. If it is in God's mind, that's what we want to be in his mind. Let's go into this lesson. In the book of 2 Kings, the 10th chapter, there's a particular thing I want to talk about. I'm going to read to you just one scripture, and then I'm going to explain some things, and I need you to really be very attentive because there are going to be things that you're going to deal with even in this week but things that you're dealing with even now. So in the book of 2 Kings, the 10th chapter, uh, I'm going to read verse number uh, 29. I believe I'm going to read verse number... Uh, I'm going to read verse number uh, 28 and 29. And here's what it says. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. How be it from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Naboth, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them to wit a golden calf that were in Bethlehem, of uh, Bethlehem, and uh, excuse me, in Bethel, and that were in Dan. I know it's in between the story, but I want to explain to you something because this is a phenomenal story, but I want you to hear. And it's going to all ride on the premise and the thought, guard your heart. And remember, when we're talking about guard your heart right now, guard what you think. The Bible tells us this, the heart is desperately wicked and highly deceitful, and no man can know it. Don't ever think you know everything about everyone, because I'm telling you, if we didn't have the Lord on our side, we are not, and we don't have the ability to keep ourselves. All right, here's what I'm going to tell you about. So here in this story, we hear about this man named Jehu. Jehu is a captain of the armies of Israel. He is a warrior. He had fought many battles. One day, as he was in his chambers with some of his other soldiers, the Bible says that God spoke to Elisha. 
Elisha is the prophet of that land of Israel. And he tells Elisha, I want you to send someone to over to see Jehu, and I want to anoint him to be the king. In other words, I want you to give him the approval and the authority of myself to let him know he's going to be king. But what I want him to do is to destroy everything that represents these other gods. Now, let me say this. At this time, the children of Israel, who were considered God's chosen people, began serving other gods. And I want you to know, you can be serving God of heaven one day, and if you get the wrong mind, you can go to serving another God and don't even realize it. They were serving other gods, and so at the time in Israel, they have a king, and his name is Ahab. Ahab has married this woman, and I told you all about three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, he marries this woman named Jezebel. They both are from different countries. Both of their parents, they were also royal family members. Her parents were a king and queen, and his parents were a king and queen of different lands, but they were evil. They served other gods. And when they came together in marriage, everything in their actual life became corrupt. It got to such a point that they would put anyone to death that they didn't even feel that they liked or that were obedient to them. Let me show you how evil these people were. One time in the Bible, there was a man named Naboth. And Naboth had just purchased this land, just a little piece of land. But the king, Ahab, saw how that land looked and it was so uh, uh, it, it was so nice and it was so well cured for. That king said, I want that for myself. He said, how much will you sell it to me for, Naboth? And Naboth said, I'm not going to sell it at all. This was inherited from my parents. I'm not going to sell it. He said, but I'm the king. I'll buy it from you. Here's a side note. Just because you have a position, don't try to use it to manipulate people. Just because you know that you have authority, don't try to use your authority to get what you want out of a situation and don't think about others. Back to the story. So what happens is, here is, is Naboth. He said, I'm not going to sell it. So King Ahab, he is so fierce and so mad. And he goes home and he begins to cry on his bedroom, in his bedroom chambers. And when his wife, Jezebel, sees him crying, she says, what are you crying about? And he says, Naboth won't sell me the land that he has. And I would have bought it from him and he won't sell it to me. Jezebel said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Listen, side note number two, if there's something that you really want, you never have to use tactics of the devil to get what you want. If it is for you, why don't you do it like this? Especially if it's something physical, work, you know, work. There's <laughs> too many people are just lazy for God. God is not lazy. God is a worker, and God so loved us so much, the Bible said that he gave his only begotten son. It took work to become the Savior. It takes work to be able to obtain things, and especially things for God. God does not want us to be the type of people that you just uh, you don't have to do anything, and all the money and everything comes to you, and you're like, oh, you know what? I got money, and I got these things going for me. Oh, I got this thing made. Listen. You got to work. The Bible says work while it is yet day for the night cometh when no man can work. Another scripture says if you don't work, don't eat. There's no need in you getting jealous uh, at uh, at the Finleys. Finleys are rich. They brought by rich. I'm not jealous of the Finleys just because they can go and buy uh, hamburgers and hot dogs and, and, and all those great things. Hey, I'm not jealous. I want to do like this. Why don't I do what they do and I can have the success they have? God is not holding back blessings from his children. A lot of times the thing holding us back is us. And especially if we want to put our job ahead of God. I know what I'm talking about. Back to the lesson. So uh, uh, Jezebel goes and sets Naboth up and has him killed. Now the land that he's killed on becomes 
King Ahab's land. Now, I want you to know this too. God can see everything. God knows everything and sees everything. When people are trying to do things against you, you should know the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. When you try to take vengeance on anyone who's not treating you right, what you're doing, you're tying God's hand and the very thing that you're using to manipulate or get somebody back, God says, I'm going to use it on you because there are certain laws that will not be broken. It's the law of sowing and reaping. If you do people right, right things will come back to you. But if you do people wrong, wrong things are going to come back to you. So here is Naboth has died, and Elijah comes and finds out. Now, this is Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. Elijah prophesies to actual King Ahab and Jezebel and tells how both of them are going to be killed. And he tells Ahab, you're going to be killed, and you're going to have a, a, a spear, not a spear, but a, a bow and arrow is going to strike you, and you're going to die. And not only that, but Jezebel, you're going to die in such a way that the dogs are going to eat your body, and there won't be nothing left to bury you in. So you can already understand, they hate him now. They hate everything about Elijah. So Elijah, he's older. Yes, you all know, those that are Bible scholars, you should know that God was very pleased with Elijah. And Elijah got caught up into heaven. In other words, was taken into heaven by God because God was so pleased with him. But before he left, he anointed, or in other words, he appointed Elisha. One is a S-H-A, that's the latter person. And the other one's a J-A-H, Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was the master of Elisha, and he becomes the next prophet. I want you to know this side note, too. It doesn't matter, and that's why I'm so glad that nobody should be worshiping me, because if Pastor Scott should expire today, whether I do or not, God will always have someone to take my place. He will. And who knows? It might be you. Back to the story. So what happens is, here is Jehu, who now has this mandate by God to destroy everything that represents the devil, everything that represents anything that's not like God. So he goes, and Jehu has this king named Jer Jer Jerome. He has him killed. He has his servants killed. He has his family killed. You don't have to remember all these names. I just want you to know what this person did. Then he goes from there, he goes to this other evil king, which we talked about, King Ahab, and then King Ahab, he's going to go and destroy him, and in trying to destroy King uh, Ahab, we find out King Ahab was gone, and when King Ahab was gone, he goes to his palace, and who's there? Jezebel, his wife, and then she sees Jehu coming with all these soldiers with him, and she cries out to him, and she says, oh, because she, she went and decorated herself. She put on makeup and everything like that, and I don't know why people try to put make it look like, oh, putting on makeup is of the devil. No, it's not. She's tried to beautify herself, and Jezebel was never a whore, ever. She was a queen. She tried to make herself up so she would look pleasing to actual Jehu. But Jehu was set for the defense of the gospel. Jehu was a person that says, you know what? For God I live, for God I die. Jehu was a person, he loved God so much, he didn't want to let anything separate him from God. His mind was made up. He had his mind guarded. This is what happens. He sees Jezebel, and she cries out to him, and she says, so have you come to kill your master? I know you've killed your master's servant. Have you come to kill your master now? You're coming to kill me? And she was saying that to him to let him know, if you kill me, you're going to be killed yourself. That's against our laws to kill a king or a queen. Jehu doesn't care who she thinks she is because he realized who he serves. When we realize who we serve and whose God is on our side, we don't have to be afraid of no devil, no person, no one. So what he says, he hollers back up because she's on the second floor balcony. He said, are there anyone who will, who will listen to me as your king? And the people, the, there were about three people that were there with Jezebel, and they say, we will. And he says, good. 
throw her down from the second floor down here to the ground where I'm at. They grabbed Jezebel, who's a very evil woman. As I told you, she put, on one occasion, she put 50 prophets to death on one day. Not only that, but she had sought out many people and tried to kill Elijah and anybody who represented God. She was the one who instigated the death of Naboth and had him killed. He said, throw her down here. They grab her, throw her off, and in there throwing her off the actual balcony, she hits against the wall and her blood hits on the wall. I know I'm not trying to get graphic, but there's a reason I'm saying this, because when Elijah just a few years before that, prophesied that she's going to be killed and that her blood was going to be over the field and she'll not even be there enough, enough won't be there to even be able to bury her. So what does Jehu do? He goes and with his horses, they ride right over her. They just ride right over her. Obviously, she's killed. Jehu goes into her palace, to her palace, has a meal there with his men. And while he's eating, he says, since she's a queen, let us go and bury her so that at least she'll get a respectful burial. They go out there to get Jezebel, which is a little bit time, maybe an hour or two later. And when they went out to the field, they didn't realize that when she fell and hit that ground, all the street animals, the dogs and everything came and literally ate her body. So all that was left was her head, her hand and her feet. That was it. That was the fulfilling of Elijah's prophecy on her. Jehu leaves there. He goes riding to find King Ahab. King Ahab, who, who was going to go into to this battle because he had other enemies, he wanted to hide so no one would know he was the king. So he put on an actual garment like he was one of his regular guards. And another prophet prophesied that he was going to be killed in that battle. But because he didn't pay any attention to the men of God, he said, you know what? I don't care what they say. I'm going out here to fight this battle. And he goes out to fight the battle. And nobody knew he was the king. But one person, let me tell you something. Evil has a way of being found. You may hide yourself. Others may hide themselves from their motives especially when they're coming against the people of God, but God sees everything and God knows who is trying to attack you and who is not. This one person has a bow and arrow. While they're having a battle, he shoots the arrow because he sees these guards coming at him. He shoots the arrow, not knowing that arrow out of all the hundreds of guards that are out there, all the hundreds of soldiers that are out there, who does the arrow hit? King Ahab, right on his side, just like it was prophesied, and his blood was spilled over the same field that the Nabot had actually had got taken from him. Sometimes you may not see God take vengeance out right then and there, but I want you to know, allow God to take vengeance. Don't try to do evil for evil. Don't try to get people back. I want you to know, if we will do what God says do, it will keep us from having to deal with things ourselves, and then God having to get us on the end, uh, on the opposite side of that, he'll have to take care of us for being disobedient and hurting somebody else. Almost through. Here we go. So Jehu had done that. Now Jehu goes and tears down all the groves, which are statues or idols of all these other gods. And the main god during that time that was of the enemy's name was Baal, B-A-A-L. So he tear that down. And then he comes in back into the main city of Jerusalem. When he gets there, he tells this person, this is what I want to do. I want to worship Baal myself. Now, this is strategy behind what he's about to say. I want to worship Baal myself. So I want to make a decree that I want all the prophets of Baal to come here so we can offer up sacrifice. And if any of the prophets of Baal don't show up, they're disobedient to me because now Jehu is the king. These other kings are dead. He's the king. He says, if anyone's disobedient to me, I want them to be killed. I want all the prophets of Baal to come here and offer sacrifices with me unto Baal. 
So when all the prophets, these evil prophets, they hear about, okay, uh, Jehu's gonna, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna uh, serve Baal, great. So hundreds of these prophets came from all over the land. Not one person that was a prophet of Baal stayed away because they heard that if we get all of us, the prophets of Baal together, Jehu's going to offer up a great sacrifice. And when Jehu goes and has his sacrifice offered up, he offers up the sacrifice. But what the other prophets didn't know is that Jehu had 80 of his strongest soldiers outside of that palace. And when they all came in there to offer up sacrifices, Jehu said, when I offer up this sacrifice, I'm going to give you a signal and I want you all to come in and destroy every single prophet of Baal. And that's what he did. So then all these people are looking, they're offering up these sacrifices to Baal. And then here comes Jehu's um, a mightiest 80 men and they destroyed. He said, don't let any of them live. He destroys them all. Then he goes and he says, I want to find every single relative of Ahab. Sometimes relatives can take on the same mentality as those in their same family. And these other relatives, Jehu knew that King Ahab had 70 sons or 70 uh, uh, children, not just all sons, but daughters also. 70, seven zero, 70. And he said, this is what I want. Send out a decree into the whole land. Anyone that kills them, I want you to do this. And this is going to sound a little gross, but this is what he had them to do. I want you to have their heads cut off, put them in a basket, and send them to me. I want to be able to see them all. While the people were out killing off all the descendants of King Ahab, here's Jehu. He goes and tears down their main idols that they worship. The great, the biggest idols of, of the actual of Baal. And then he has it all set on fire. They bring back all the heads of all the children of Ahab. They kill off all of the relatives, all the actual, uh, everything that was involved with him. They destroyed them all. <clears throat> and the Bible said God was pleased with them because he tore down the grove. I want to read this to you again because I'm about through. Uh, in 2 Kings again, the 10th chapter, verse number 28, it says, Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. He got rid of everything that represents this other God. And I want you to know, if you got something in your life that is representing another God, what do you mean represent another God? Anything that controls you more than the Holy Spirit, more than your relationship with God, I want you to know that's of the devil. Verse 29 says, how be it for the sins of Jerome, the son of Naboth, who made Israel to sin. Just because this person was a king, he made all his followers to follow him and sin also. Watch this. Jehu departed not from after them to wit the golden calf that were at Balaam, I mean that were in uh, Bethel and that were in Dan. In other words, they had these idols that were set up. There were these golden calves. They were set up in these two areas. I want to read to you this very last scripture, and I'm going to end. What happened to Jehu? Verse 30 says this. And the Lord said unto Jehu, because thou have done well in executing that which is right in my eyes, and have done unto the, the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart, Thy children of the fourth generation shall sit at thy throne of Israel. Verse 31 is my last verse. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart, for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. And you heard this from the word of God. That same Jehu who destroyed all those people, tore down all the idols, had Ahab killed and had Jezebel killed, had the other king, Joram, uh, Joram killed, all the things that God had told him to do and tear down all those things. He got to a place that he himself became complacent 
and stop serving God himself. After winning all that victory, and let me say this to all of you, the most dangerous time in the life of a believer is not before you go to battle. No, it's after you've got victory in your life. After it seems like things are working out, after it seems like you've got, you understand how things are, are, are going, working to your advantage, and you let your guards down, and you stop guarding your heart, you stop guarding your mind, it's easy to point at everybody else's mind. It's easy to point at everyone else's fault. But let me say this to you, sir. Let me say this to you, madam. You got just as many thoughts and it may not be in that same area, but you got thoughts also. Before you do like the people want to do to the woman that was caught in adultery and throw rocks and stone her, Jesus said, ye that be without sin, you cast the first stone. You so great? You got it together? Here is Jehu has the glory of God on and in his life. He's a mighty warrior. He's a mighty king. And he does all these great exploits, exactly what the Lord told him. But what happened is he got exalted. It is easy to get exalted and start looking at yourself, and especially people who think they're smart. Because you become a Bible, you become a word to yourself. And nobody can tell you anything. No, you're smart. You're intelligent. No, I know how to handle this. I can handle this. And God is saying, don't you see what's going on, Jehu? Don't think God won't try to warn people before they get off. Even when the trajectory of it starts a little bit off. Because in these days, when people get a little off, you give them a little more time, they are off, far off. And then they'll be talking about things and they'll be talking about people. You who, you or I, anybody who gets to that point where you can see all the wrongs for everybody else and you can't see your own wrongs, you're being blinded by the God of this world. Madam, sir, brothers, sisters, Scott, we have to always examine ourselves. Always. And walk in a mentality of gratefulness. Walk with an attitude of gratitude that God spared us because least we forget we were the ones who were caught dead in our trespasses and sins and deserve to go to hell. I'm looking at each one of you who have your cameras on. Y'all look good in the natural. Y'all look good. See some of y'all face looks smooth and hair flowing. I, you know, y'all got y'all. Yeah, that's good. But that's not what's going to get us to heaven. What's going to give us to heaven is having the right mind, the mind of Christ. And I'm saying to you all in my summation, because I'm about to end now, 10 minutes early. Whatever you do, do it heartily. In other words, do it with all you can for the Lord. But never get to a point to forget it's God that's causing you to give wealth. It's God that's causing you to have things in your life. It's God that's causing you to be protected from hurt, harm, and danger. We've got to guard our heart. And as we mentioned earlier, protect it. Like Sister Tanya said, when you got it, like your money, you want to protect it, you want to put it in the bank. Here is the bank for you, the word of God. Guard your heart. Stay in the word of God. Some of you are slacking. Just like myself, sometimes I'll be slacking and I have to stir myself up. And you know when you stop doing what you used to do, this is how you can tell if the devil is gaining ground, you start going back to doing what things you stopped doing. And God is saying, I want you to still love me like you used to love me. Stir up that gift. Stop playing. Stop thinking that, oh, I don't need to deal those things with God. That's what Jehu thought. Oh, it's all right. God loves me anyway. But look what happened to him. He lost his love for God. And all the great things, we have to read about the great things and then to find out in that 31st verse of the 10th chapter of 2 Kings, Jehu himself left God. So let's pray that we don't leave God. Here's what I want to do today, if it's okay with you all. Today would be a good day for us to rededicate ourselves to the Lord. It doesn't mean, it doesn't make it 
you know, sometimes people want to hold on to salvation. Or oh, I know I got saved in 1932. Doesn't matter. What matters is today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear my voice, this is what God says, harden not your heart. So God wants us to be able to say, you know what, Lord, let's just make it right. I want to rededicate myself. So I'm just asking if you all wouldn't mind rededicating yourself with me. And I appreciate it. And this is what we're going to do. We're just going to pray. And I'm going to ask uh, if you'll do that with me. Just repeat after me the words I'll say. Dear Lord, come into my life and save me. Lord, I need you every day every moment and every hour. Be my Lord and be my King. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that Lord, you raised Jesus from the dead for my sins. So forgive me of my sins, those known and unknown, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that with me and believe it, I want you to know it doesn't matter what you did five minutes before this actual Bible study. God is saying, because you're now understanding how we have to protect our mind or guard our mind, that's why the Bible talks about guard your heart. Now that we can do that, Anytime that we wind up sinning, just ask God to forgive us. But let's try to live a, a life that will be pleasing to the Lord, and he'll bless you for it. Without any further ado, I want to have uh, Elder Brian Bear with you. End us with prayer, sir. Amen. God, you know our hearts. God, you know our concerns and our challenges. You have a date, God, and a time to answer our prayers. Thank you. Give us patience, long-suffering, and the peace as we encounter all of our trials and tribulations. Give us a humility when you work things out in our favor. Give us your righteousness because you judge things and you love your people. Thank you for the peace, O oh God, that passes all understandings. Thank you for the victory, O oh God. Thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank each and every one of you all for coming out and joining in with Bible today. I see I have my dear friend, uh, Sister Charlotte. So good to see you. Had the nerve to have my middle name is her last name. Oh, goodness gracious. So good to see. There is the Davis family, Davison family. They have a new uh, new addition. They have new baby. Sister Rakeen, I mean, uh, Brother Rakeen is right there too. Oh, that's the new baby right there. Oh my God. Yay! That's our new addition to Bible right there. So you see it. Well, and they make beautiful babies. Sister uh, uh, Shamari, are you able to uh, talk at all? Yes. Hi, family. Hey. How y'all doing? You doing good. Oh, that 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 baby too pretty. I and keep y'all uh keep her uh grandmama away from her because she gonna try. She told me she gonna try to take the baby with her. He here already eating him up, eating him up. Hey, well, we thank and praise God for you all. We're praying with you every day and with the babies. And uh, there, oh, there's the biggest baby right now. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing, everybody? Good, 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 man. Congratulations to you all. Appreciate and we're just that. praying God thank will you. just do a mighty work in your children and thank he will you. keep you all safe. And uh, to protect them from any hurt, harm, and danger. And we just believe God for that. We're doing that. So uh, we look forward to being able to see them even more. And uh, man, we're just so proud of y'all. We just yeah, we love y'all. Love y'all too, Dale. Okay. Love we thank y'all for everybody else too. Brother Carlos, so good to see you. Sister Laura Lai, Sister Shyla, Brother Ian, so good to see you, Brother Quinn. Thank you, Sister Jaden, for that opening prayer. Girl, you, you, Hey, you praying up something now. I'm going to tell you now. You ain't just saying words. So yeah, we're going to keep you fervent. Amen. So we thank God for you. Thank God for the bears that are here with me, the actual Scott family and everybody else and the Finleys. 
I know they're not they they're, they're not billionaires yet, but they're they're working on it. So uh, don't worry about it. I don't want anybody calling them up. Can I get a dollar? No. All right. <laughs> you gonna do that? All right. Take care. God bless. We'll talk to you all soon. Love you all. This tape will be out in probably about next about twenty minutes. God bless. Bye bye.